my presentation will go uh, quickly uh, through uh, the uh, why the, the IMF focus on these issues. And uh, I would like to present like a snapshot of the work, the policy analytical work, and the analytical work has been extensively uh, discussed by my colleagues, but I would like uh, mostly to focus on how we operationalize this work at the country level. Uh, so uh, this is uh, just briefly what I would like to touch upon. So starting with the, the focus, uh, as um, my colleagues uh, show with their research, um, the, uh, we focus on, on these issues because uh, they are macro critical. And this is a diagram that uh, uh, is the essence of our work. The inequality um, is really the, um, the other coin and goes end in end with, with growth and stability and macroeconomic stability. And uh, it, it does through the channels of productivity, allocation of resources, but also we have seen that uh, reforms that uh, they are um, with, with the overall objective to enhance growth, they, they really have important distributional effect that we cannot ignore. And not last is that um, inequality is also through the social cohesion it's, it's really important because social cohesion uh, can, inequality can affect social cohesion and the support for, for reforms that in turn, as we say, can be, are, are, are meant to, to enhance growth. Uh, same for gender. Gender is, um, again, uh, for its the labor force participation, we have seen not only as an effect directly on the uh, the uh, the pool of resources out there, but also bring diversity, right? So it, it, it's important for uh, for uh, economic uh, economic diversification, for that uh, that brings economic resilience, in particular in developing countries, and it has a strong link with uh, income inequality. Uh, is another facet of inequality, gender so inequality. So that is also again we go back and all links to growth and macroeconomic stability, which is the core of our mandate at the IMF. Uh, so in terms of, just briefly, these are examples of, uh, of uh, analytical work. Here is the paper by Jonathan. Uh, the first one, the second, the, the look at the nexus between uh, growth and, uh, and inequality. This is another paper that we did last year uh, with David and, and others showing that how the macroeconomic policy uh, for growth can really have an impact, an important distributional impact, and that sometimes can be detrimental. So we need really to, from the onset, keep an eye on those and see how uh, reform packages can be designed to mitigate this, this, this effect or turn it a win-win situation. Uh, other work uh, done recently in, in the context of uh, European uh, countries, and here are more on the policy-oriented uh, paper. This is a book on fiscal policy, which is the main tools that authority and policymakers have for redistribution, and it goes into the nitty-gritty of spending and uh, and, uh, and the uh, taxation. And this is a paper that we did for the background paper for the G20, again, is an overview uh, of trends and uh, in all their facets uh, in, of inequality and uh, policies to, um, to foster uh, inclusive growth. And this is the fiscal monitor uh, of last year, the fall of last year, that uh, focus on tackling inequality, looking in particular our, um, at taxation, progressive taxation, and, uh, and spending also entering into the uniform based income uh, debate. Uh, for gender, again, uh, a number of papers focusing on uh, labor force participation, wage cap. Uh, what is uh, you know barriers to it, and then uh, the uh, this is a, a note that we did recently this summer for the G7, looking at again 
uh, how to pursue economic empowerment of, of women and the importance for growth. And here is um, a book that came out um, recently on gender budgeting. This is a project that we have started over the last uh, couple of years. We are really focused on gender budgeting. And this is a book that uh, takes stock of the experience in 80 countries and with a focus on, in particular, case studies for 23 countries. And this is uh, work that's been uh, supported also by, uh, by DFIT. Um, so moving to engagement with countries, what we, we engage with countries through surveillance and uh, through program, basically policy advice. So and in 2015, the context of the Financing for Development, uh, the fund committed to a number of initiatives. And one area where uh, we, that we committed was to deepen our work in gender inequality and gender and to operationalize it. So the approach that was systematically uh, taken was, um, uh, was a pilot project. So we started uh, as, also to best explore uh, how to add values in, uh, in these areas to our uh, membership. So since then we have done, um, we are the third wave of pilots for both gender inequality. We have done about 38 countries uh, in, on the inequality and 39 on gender, and there are like another four or five to go to complete the inequality and the gender pilots. Now, um, going forward, a uh, decision was made to broaden the analysis across the membership, depending on the level of the macro criticality uh, of the issues. And uh, in order to help our uh, teams uh, to really think about it from a macroeconomic perspective. Now, this is where we come from, from the macroeconomic perspective. How to think about inequality and gender. We have produced these two how-to notes uh, that uh, were um, really meant for internal purposes for our teams. Uh, but we decided to publish them because there was a big demand from outside the world to understand how we, we think about these issues. And these are notes that um, help to really have the framework in mind to, to establish the, what we call the macro criticality, how inequality and, and gender gap can interfere with growth and macroeconomic stability, how to address these issues. And, uh, and at the end, all what you know, what, whatever policy we recommend to address inequality how, and, and gender, how that fit back into the macro picture, because all of these um, recommendations at the end can have, again, uh, there are all policies that can have important fiscal costs, but also can have macro implications. Um, in these studies, in these notes, there are also what we consider best practices. Uh, from some countries uh, through the, the pilots that we have done, and then the tools also that are uh, uh, available inside, produced inside the fund and outside, and how we also relate to uh, other organizations and collaboration with other organizations and stakeholders. So um, from these pilots that cover about um, almost a third of our uh, membership, um, we, we see uh, that, you know, a lot of the, the topics really dealt with the issues related to inequality and, uh, and gender. Um, this is the, the gender part. They're very, um, varies very much because inequality is, is really complex issues and depends very much on the, on the development of the country, the macro and social situation, but also on the reforms the authority embarking on and, uh, and also the interest themselves of the authority. So uh, the study have um, covered very different issues in this context. And uh, here are a couple of examples. For, in, in the case of India, uh, since 2015, the team has, uh, has uh, analyze various issues related to gender, uh, in particular uh, in terms of financial inclusion, in terms of um, 
education, and, uh, and this is the angle of sanitation. Sanitation in India, uh, India missed the Millennium Development Goals on sanitation um, by like 11%. And, uh, and India is a country that from the last census, uh, only 53% of the households have sanitation uh, at home in the household. And the lack is in particular in the rural areas. And what the, our team study is how this would also impede the participation, the female level, participation in the labor force of women. And this, because women are the ones that take care mostly of the, uh, of the cooking of the, the house and the provision of water. So calculation from our, um, from our teams show that if the provision of sanitation, infrastructure and sanitation could reduce by 10% the time spent of women in taking care of the, of, of the, 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 the the household chores for uh, um, this would increase their participation, labor for participation by about one and a half percent, which contribute be greatly more than one percent to uh, to growth. And in addition, sanitation is also important for um, for safety uh, for female in India, in particular, and uh, and that also. There is a, a great relation with keeping kids, w girls in school. Uh, so very important also for the skill, for the formation of skills. The other work is Bolivia. Um, this is related to inequality. Bolivia is a country that uh, um, from 2005 to 2014 has experienced great um, boom and growth. It's been, growth has been about two percentage higher than the, the first the, the five years uh, before that period. And uh, with it also experienced a great drop in, uh, in inequality. And we are talking about 12 percentage points in the Gini over that period. So um, the team in the 2017 Article 4, which is our mission, our annual uh, consultation with the country, study at the time, with the change of regime of, um, in, um, in commodity prices, because a uh, good part of the boom was due to the booming prices of both gas and, and agriculture. So with the, different, with the change in regime in commodity prices, what that means for the gains that the, the, the country have done, is this sustainable? So date is entangled, and here is um, these are the data in the Gini, and this is applying a general equilibrium model that we have developed within the fund that we'll talk in a minute. Uh, they disentangle the effect of the Gini, uh, of the, the, the drop in inequality. And what they see that um, a third, it was due directly to the, uh, the boom in commodity prices, in particular in agriculture, not much in, in gas prices. Uh, but the rest was due really to the, um, the, uh, the increase in social transfer and, uh, and the reduction in unskilled population, which over that period went from 63% to 52%. And those were really um, supported by the budget that was enjoying the high price in, in gas because for revenue from gas. So all these gains were now in a different regime and the discussion with the authority was really focused on how to go forward if prices are not going to recover. And that at the time, now we have recovered a bit, but we are not back to the, clearly those levels. And the last uh, example I want to report is Argentina. And this was a study both looking at uh, policy reform, um, fiscal reforms, and particularly the impact on both the macro, the uh, distributional impact, and the impact on uh, labor for participation and gender. And this, again, was done uh, with, with um, in, again, in a general equilibrium uh, framework. 
And here was the team was looking at, uh, in particular for the gender, um, Argentina has closed the education gap, but uh, there are still major differences in, in the wage gap in the market, in the labor market wage gap and uh, labor for participation of male and female in the formal sector. So they analyze what policy and they look could, could help both to um, create incentives for, for, for workers to get into the formal sector for both male and female, but also to increase the female, um, the female participation and reduce the wage gap. And they consider reforms like reducing the tax wedge, social security contribution, and they look at uh, uh, targeted child care for low-income families and, uh, and how to reduce discrimination in the formal workplace. So um, the other, um, other um, big work stream that the IMF does, that how we engage with countries is through capacity development. So uh, here we have training and workshop and, uh, and, and, t and technical assistance. And here we have uh, for the, we, we have, we're very active in, in all these areas and uh, for we, we have workshop for authorities but also internally on inclusive growth financial development uh, and inclusion uh, and distribution analysis of policy reform in particular and for example subsidy reforms and we also do p-learning workshop on uh, on gender budgeting we have just done recently one in rwanda and one in, uh, in mauritius uh, technical assistance, we provide technical assistance, uh, distribution lines in particular is an integral part of, um, uh, of technical assistance on tax policy uh, reform and subsidy reforms. And we also provide technical assistance, gender budgeting in the, uh, in, in the, the PFM, uh, the public uh, financial management uh, framework of the budget. In terms of toolkits, as I said, we have developed, um, we have a number of tools, kits that we have developed inside, in-house. In and I would like to highlight, uh, in particular, um, the, the framework that we have seen a number of countries, uh, like the Bolivia and the Argentina case I've used, which is uh, um, a framework that we have developed with the support of, of DFID, and this is a general equilibrium uh, model, a dynamic general equilibrium model with heterogeneous agents. So uh, these are models, they are very much customized to, uh, to each country uh, based on their uh, country-specific macro and micro characteristics. And with this model features um, different exactly heterogeneous ages within each sector of the economy. And uh, they have different endowments in terms of skills, in terms of, uh, of land, for example. And, uh, and the outcome, we, we can simulate uh, reforms, the impact on both um, the macro, but also distributional uh, implications. And now we have add also the gender angle. And we have done two kits, uh, which is a friendly, um, user-friendly two kits that uh, is relatively simple to, to, uh, to apply, uh, much more than the, the basic models, which are very heavy and, uh, and very costly in terms of time. Um, and uh, the, the, the model we have developed is for um, very, um, like, country with large rural sector, basically very developing uh, low-income countries. Uh, and uh, we are now in the process to um, develop another toolkit for more developed countries. And uh, the last part is going forward, the plans that we have. Uh, part of the analytical policy we have um, um, on the on the um, inclusive growth, there will be uh, another paper, a G G20 report coming out soon, and we have three papers on gender. One, uh, the one that uh, Jonathan mentioned on gender diversity and and growth, 
Um, then we have one on gender and technology that looks at, uh, at the micro level uh, where females are mostly employed, which sector, and considering how technology can affect those sectors if the implication can have for men and women uh, for, uh, for those sectors and for, for employment. And the last one is a paper on, um, on the role of gender and financial stability. Uh, and look only, not only at financial access uh, to women, but also women as provider of financial services. Um, and these will come out uh, before Bali, uh, before the annual meeting now. And the, uh, in terms of operational work, as I said, after the, the conclusion of the, the pilots, um, the decision was made to um, broaden the analysis to countries that uh, where, uh, where gender and inequality are considered the level highly uh, macro critical and uh, and and then in terms of the toolkits i already mentioned that we are developing these new toolkits and uh, we have also courses now they are only internally on this uh, uh, general equilibrium framework and the plan uh, hopefully is to be able to uh, open up to also this summer award and with this i will conclude thank you